Hello again. Before we start our build, one important point. Every time you close and reopen Fusion 360, it activates the overall build. So look up here at the browser. See how it says active component is the infinity cube? You don't want that. Scroll on down here and reactivate the block. So every time you close and reopen Fusion 360, watch for this. All right, now it's time to make the actual hinge components. So let me show what I mean. Uh, let's go to the other build. So here's my cubes, here's my hinges, and I'll turn the hinge on. And you can see that the hinges have what I call an outie part that goes into an any part of the block and vice versa. There's an outie part of the block. Well, let's go around down here. Down here. The outie part of the block also goes into the any part of the hinge. And there's a reason I did it this way, which has to do with 3D printing. So let's create that. So I'm going to kind of center up my view. And then I'm going to click Create Sketch. And I'm going to click this surface. And I'm going to say, oh no, it snapped a view. I can't see anything. Don't worry about it. So we're going to rotate our view. And I'll show you another way to do this in a second. But first thing we want to do is hit X for construction, L for line. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And I'm not going to click until I see this blue square, which means I'm perfectly on the edge. So I click there, and I'm not going to click again until I get another blue square there. And I'm going to hit Escape to stop drawing lines. So by the way, whenever you do any particular line or command, it'll keep doing that until you either hit Enter or Escape. Now I want to inactivate construction by hitting X. And now I'm going to dial in letter... C for circle. I'm not going to click until I get a triangle or delta, if you want to be fancy, symbol. I'm going to click and then drag, and I'm going to dial in number two and hit enter. And now I've made uh, a circle. I'm super happy about my circle. Now let's click the circle and hit letter E for extrude, and I'm going to extrude that two millimeters. There you go. So I've made the Audi. Now let's make the Inny. So same thing, we're going to go to click Create Sketch, and I'm going to click this surface. Now I'm going to show you a little bit different way. I'm not going to rotate my view. I'm going to come over here to my Sketch Palette menu, and I'm going to click Slice. Pretty handy, right? Now I can see right through everything and only on the particular surface I'm sketching on. I'm going to hit X for Construction, L for Line. Click here, drag out, click again when I get the square. Escape to stop drawing, X to inactivate construction, C for circle, click the center, drag, and I'm going to make this one a diameter of 2.8. Because the other one is a diameter of 2, and I want the other one to be a diameter of 2.8, so that way I have 0.4 millimeters of clearance on either side. And I'm going to rotate my view, I didn't have to. I'm going to click the circle until it, you know, highlights blue, dial in E for extrude, and I'm going to give it a negative 2.4. And there you go. I have made a 0.4 millimeters of clearance on either side, which is going to give it the necessary wiggle room. All right, it's time for our first assignment in this build. But let me get you prepared and teach you some advanced timeline features first. So each cube has two hinge points, a hinge point on one side and a hinge point on the other side and that differs per each cube. So what we're going to do now is scroll down to your timeline and grab this thing here called the playhead. Click it and drag it and drop it in front of the fillet. Um, and we've kind of hid all the steps we just did, but don't worry, they're still there. Now you're going to right click the fillet like we did prior and we're going to suppress that feature again. And we're going to go to the bottom of the cube such that the M turns into a W. And we're going to create a sketch on the bottom. Now, here's your first assignment. What I'd like you to do is create this cut in on the bottom, just like we did on the top. Note the orientation. So it's got to be right here with respect to the bottom. And it's super important you start making your learning as active as possible because you're going to learn a lot more this way. Uh, I teach pretty much any math and science you can think of. So like physics, chemistry, uh, math from like pre-algebra to calculus, uh, 
uh, medical physiology, anatomy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the most important thing in any of those classes is make your learning as active as possible. So let's practice that right here. So I will say pause the video right now and try to make that inset and I'll give you the answer shortly. Would you pause the video? I hope you did. Okay, so let's make the inset. Ready? I'm gonna click X for construction, L for line. I'm gonna draw a line that goes from here to here, make it five, and then I'm gonna inactivate construction with X, R for rectangle, click the dot, drag, make this 10 tab seven, hit enter, and then I'm going to extrude this inward, negative seven. And there you are. And right now, I'm just gonna do this anyway. I'm going to unsuppress the fillet. And so, that's your answer to that part. All right, it's time for your next assignment. Ready? I want you to make the innie and outie components of the hinge, uh, where we just created the inset into. So remember that the outie is two millimeters in diameter with a two millimeter extrusion, and the innie is 2.8 millimeters in diameter with a 2.4 millimeter extrusion. And same thing, try to do it from memory if possible. If you're stuck, refer to the first video only when you're stuck. You know, always try to do it best from memory. And I will go over the answer shortly and pause the video now. All right, let's do this. So uh, I'm gonna create sketch first, click on this surface and I'll slice this time. X for construction, L for line. Click a corner. Click a corner again when you see the square. Escape to stop. C for circle, X to inactivate construction. I'm gonna wait till I see the triangle. Zoom, or uh, click, and then number two. Click the circle, E for extrude, number two, extrude at two millimeters. Now let's make the any on the other side. So I'm gonna click create sketch, click the other side. This time I won't slice, just for the heck of it. X for construction, L for line. Click when I see a square. Click again when I see the other square. I don't even have to hit escape. I can just hit C for circle right away. By the way, if you start drawing your circle and you're like, oh no, I still have construction on and you hit X here, it won't work. Instead, you actually have to click the construction icon over here. Just a little tidbit. All right, 2.8, enter. Click the circle, E for extrude, negative 2.4, enter. And there you are. This is how to do the hinge on the bottom. And we're gonna recover the hinge on the top shortly, but let's do some mirroring first. Clever use of the timeline and mirroring will allow us to save a lot of steps in this process. You'll see. So first thing I want to do is mirror this whole cube down to the bottom here. So here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna come over here to the Create tab, left click it, scroll down, and then click Mirror. And if you look over here at your right menu, the first thing it's looking for is the object you wish to mirror. So we click the top object, because it's the only thing on the screen. And now we need to come over here and activate Mirror Plane which tells Fusion 360. Now we're looking for which plane we're gonna mirror it a boot. So now we're gonna click the front surface like this, and then now it's mirrored it across, but before you click okay, make sure operation is set to new body. If it's set to join, the two are going to be as one, and we don't want that. Now, goody, 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 we need to create a space between these two. So we're gonna use the move tool. And so that's located up here in the quick menu. But of course, I'm gonna recommend key letter M for move. Now, make sure your move type is set to free move. There's a couple difference. We're gonna go over one of those in the later parts. Uh, but let's click the top center of this cube. It doesn't matter for this step, but it will matter in future steps and it makes your life easier. All right, now click this upward facing arrow and I wanna move it, I'm just gonna to snap to a top view. I wanna move it 0.4 millimeters away. But look what happened. 
it moved it into the cube. So now you have two bits of matter occupying the same space. And that's impossible. So we need to put a negative in front of it. Now it's negative 0.4 away, creating a 0.4 millimeter space. Then I'm going to click OK. And now look at this. We've kept track of all those features, right? I've mirrored everything. But look, I didn't mirror this top stuff over here because I didn't want that to show up on this cube. We'll get back to clever use of the timeline shortly. OK, there's something I forgot to do, though, a bit ago. And I did this intentionally. There should be a fillet on the bottom here, a nice rounded edge. So what I want to do to shorten my time span here is come back down to your timeline. You're going to grab the playhead and drag it and drop it in front of the mirror. Now we're going to fillet this edge here. So I'm going to hit F for fillet, click the edge and dial in number three. And I've given that a rounded edge. And then now come back down. You can see it, what it looks like here, by the way. Come back down, grab the playhead, and drag it and drop it in front of the move. And look what happens. That fillet appeared on both sides. So while we're at it, let's just drag the timeline all the way. Grab it, left click it down here, grab it and drag it and drop it all the way in front. And now look what happened. The original steps we did will re-show up, but they don't transfer over to the other cube. If I left them there and mirrored it, it would be here too, and we don't want that. And while we're at it, let's fill it this side too. So F for fill it, click the line, and dial in number three, enter. Now, here's your next big assignment. What I want you to do is create this full hinge. Fill it in everything on this side. I want the Audi pointing upward and the Innie downward. So let me show what I mean. Create this on the other side. And again, try to do it your best from memory. And I will give you the answer shortly. Pause the video now. All right, everybody, it's answer time. You ready? First thing, I'm going to go back and suppress the fillet. So now I have a flat edge to draw on. I'm going to create sketch on this surface and we're going to do it with hotkeys. X for construction, L for line. Click the bottom corner, drag up, dial in five. Hit R for rectangle, X to inactivate construction. Click and drag. I'm going to make this seven, tab 10. Hit enter. Click the surface, E for extrude, negative seven. Boom, there we go. Might as well do it now. I'm going to unsuppress this feature again. By the way, I could have just left it off the entire time, but I just wanted to teach more this way. All right, now let's create the Innie and the Audi. Audi on the bottom. So create sketch on the bottom. Slice it. X, L. Click when I see the boxes. Click and click. C for circle. X, inactivate. Click, drag, two, enter. Zoom in for the heck of it. E for extrude, number two. And there we go. Let's create the top thingy. All right, construction, click the top. Rotate this time. Let's be fancy. We'll go glove side. X, L, click, click. C for circle, X to inactivate. Click and drag, 2.8. Hit enter. Click this thing, extrude, negative 2.4. Hit enter. Almost done. Now we're just going to fill it this part. F for fill it. Click the line. Dial in number three. Boom. Done. Now we actually only have one more big step on the blocks, and that's the mirroring. All right, now it's time to cleverly mirror and move to save a lot of time. First thing, we're going to mirror both of these blocks. So I'm going to click Create, scroll down, and select Mirror. And now I'm going to select two objects. I'm going to click the top one and the bottom one. Now it needs to activate the mirror plane. So I'm going to come over to the right menu, click within it to activate it, and I'm going to click this front surface here. Now again, make sure your operation is set to New Body. It'll be joined by default. And then click OK. 
Now, we need to separate these two. I'm gonna hit M for move and copy, that icon there. Click the top center, click the bottom one, anywhere. Click the right arrow roll to activate the mirror ring or the moving plane. And we're gonna dial in 0 0.4. And that's the right 0 0.4 this time, and then click Enter. And I think you know where I'm going next. This is pretty cool. So I'm gonna hit mirror again. So create, scroll down, hit mirror. And then we're gonna select this one, this one, this one, this one. Come over to your right menu. Click within mirror plane to activate that field. Click the front surface. And then again, make sure operation is set to new body. Click OK. Look at that, almost done. Now, M for mover copy. We're gonna click the center of one of these and then click the other three. Click the top arrow, and I think it's going to be negative 0.4. Yes, it is, and that moves it downward. And boom, there you are. Isn't that cool? It takes some time at first, and I speed it up as I go along because I just want to make sure nobody misses anything. But then, you know, hopefully as you get used to it, you start seeing the power in Fusion 360 and what you can get done if you're clever with mirroring and how you use your workflow. And uh, we're going to move on to the hinge in the next video.